Russia announced last month that its vaccine, named Sputnik V after the Soviet-era satellite that was the first launched into space in 1957, had already received approval. This raised concerns among Western scientists over a lack of safety data, with some warning that moving too quickly on a vaccine could be dangerous. Russia denounced criticism as an attempt to undermine Moscow's research, and a Russian investor claimed vindication when Britain's prestigious The Lancet published research that showed patients in early tests developed antibodies with no serious adverse events. In The Lancet study, Russian researchers reported on two small trials, each involving 38 healthy adults aged between 18 and 60, who were given a two-part immunization. Each participant was given a dose of the first part of the vaccine and then given a booster with the second part 21 days later. They were monitored over 42 days and all developed antibodies within the first three weeks. The report said the data showed that the vaccine was safe, well tolerated, and does not cause serious adverse events in healthy adult volunteers. Hi everyone. That's Science Telegram Channel Digest. Most interesting science news weekly. Before we start, make sure that you click subscribe button and like this video. The moon is rusting, and researchers want to know why. The moon, our closest cosmic neighbor, and the only other body in the solar system on which humans have set foot, is fairly well known to us. We know that there is practically no air. We know that there is water ice, but no liquid water. So, you can understand why the detection of hematite on the moon has scientists baffled, since hematite is an oxidized form of iron that, here on Earth, requires the presence of both air and water to form. Especially since the moon is constantly bombarded with a stream of hydrogen from the solar wind, a reducing agent that donates its electrons to the materials it interacts with. Oxidization occurs due to a loss of electrons, so even if all of the right elements were present for oxidization to occur, the solar wind should cancel it out. The hematite in question was discovered in data collected by the Indian Space Research Organization's Chandrayaan-1 orbiter. The Moon Mineralogy Mapper, M3, designed by NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory uses hyperspectral imaging to perform a granular spectroscopic analysis, giving a detailed breakdown of the Moon's surface mineral composition. Russia declassified footage of the most powerful nuclear bomb blast in history. In October 1961, the Soviet Union dropped the most powerful nuclear bomb in history over a remote island north of the Arctic Circle. Though the bomb detonated nearly 2.5 miles, 4 kilometers, above ground, the resulting shockwave stripped the island as bare and flat as a skating rink. Onlookers saw the flash more than 600 miles, 965 kilometers, away, and felt its incredible heat within 160 miles, 250 kilometers, of ground zero. The bomb's gargantuan, mushroom cloud climbed to just below the edge of space. This was ARTS 220, also known as the Tsar Bomber. Nearly 60 years after the bomb's record-shattering detonation, no single explosive device has come close to matching its destructive power. More about this extraordinary explosion you might find in a link in description. Last week, Rosatom State Atomic Energy Corporation, Russia's state atomic agency, released 40 minutes of previously classified footage, showing the bomb's journey from manufacture to mushroom cloud. We just got more evidence bacteria could survive the journey between Earth and Mars. What if microbes could drift through the vastness of space like pollen in the wind, planting the seeds of life on planets both far and wide? Is that how life started on our own planet? Is such a journey even possible? New research from the astrobiology mission Tanpopo, which means dandelion in Japanese, suggests it very well could be. Samples of a highly resistant bacterium genus called Nococcus, which can be found high up in our atmosphere, has officially survived three years in the vacuum of space, 
withstanding microgravity, intense ultraviolet radiation and extreme temperatures whilst riding on the outside of the International Space Station. The study adds a level of feasibility to the controversial panspermia theory, which posits that life did not originate on Earth, but arrived here from elsewhere in the universe. That's all for today. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, and subscribe. We'll see you with latest science news next week, thanks and welcome.